Greetings. I am your host, not Jason Miles, and welcome to another episode of This Is Revolution podcast. For all those returning listeners and subscribers, thank you for coming back. And to those new to the channel, thank you for taking a moment to check us out. If you dig what we're doing, please hit like and of course subscribe. That goes a long way in promoting the channel. Welcome to Saturday's This Is Revolution, where we will be hosting an Ask Pascal Anything Hour from our audience. Our host is the ma- is the normal co-host of This Is Revolution and the host of the Mau Mau Hour. Let's bring him in. Everyone's homie, everyone's dog, Pascal Robert. Peace and greetings to the audience. Peace and greetings to the chat. Peace and greetings, M2 Sun. Hello, hello to everyone. Thank you for coming and joining us on this Saturday where the theme is past ask, pa- ask Pascal will wear anything. Ah, uh, well, we are here and Saturday. We are in election season. Things are going on in the news around us. It's a kind of a slow news week, but we've decided to allow this show to open up for about an hour to give everyone the opportunity, either through, well, hopefully through Super Chat, to ask questions to us about things relative to politics, current events, or what's going on in this show in the world overall. But, you know, we do not have the soundboard. That's usually Jason's purview. How are you doing, my good friend, M. Toussaint? I'm doing all right. It's a happy Saturday. It's a happy Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. We shouldn't sing, right? Is that is that, is that a possibility of us getting a... Possibility. A possibility of getting a check... I guess yeah. this is, if we sing on, we sing popular brand t- tunes from uh, Rolodex of hip hop music. That's right. Indeed, indeed. So this one issue that I was interested in talking about that I picked up on the news recently that was that crossed my thoroughfare was about Ross Baraka housing, baby bonds, and reparations. Newark Mayor Ross Baraka lays out progressive overhaul for New Jersey. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with politics of the Northeast, but New Jersey is not exactly a state where you would think that, you know, uh, overhauling or, or introducing reparations or baby bonds as a means of closing the racial wealth gap is going to be a, exactly a popular way to address the politics of the state. But it seems that Ross Baraka was chartering out some type of attempt to bring those issues into bear. He's trying to use them to actually effectively create some kind of new swell in his politics. Newark Mayor Ross Baraka is charting out an unabashedly progressive lane in the primary to succeed Democratic Governor Phil Murphy, eschewing what he described as an incremental centralist politics. During an hour-long event at Rowan University Tuesday night, Baraka hinted at what he, his, government, his governmental agenda for New, New Jersey would look like affordable housing, reparations, baby bonds, desegregating schools, and increasing taxes on corporations and the new wealthy. Now, it's interesting to me is that what exactly is Baraka using as his definition as progressive politics? And what exactly is the t- the, the term and who exactly are the terms that are being used to, to create that agenda? Is simply saying that you are progressive on an idea like reparations that doesn't address the class inequities within black communities make one make one progressive? What about other universal programs that might be more likely to the populations overall? Again, it strikes me that Baracko is using a kind of you know petit bourgeois black professional managerial class politics to appeal to a type of black politics that we haven't seen since Barack before the, the Obama era. It's not like the simple traditional kind of neoliberal corporatist black politics we've seen before, even though we've seen in Baraka turning turning to those type of policies uh, we've seen in terms of his uh, charter school agenda. But also it's a little bit more of a still trying to you know dole out those, you know, what we call fat back and biscuits to black constituents with ideas that are, you know, hauling off. Yeah, of area in, in areas to that uh, to that constituency. So that's something I wanted to think about as well. We're discussing in the politics. You know, uh, someone said, "I mean, a lot of ideas of reparations are bad by definition." Depends. That's true. I mean, 
depends on the, but in terms of what he means by reparations overall, but in terms of the constant the way in which reparations have been leveraged as a means, as identity, identity identity leveraging to really kind of kneecap a class-based political agenda is not something that we at this revolution podcast have particularly been in favor of being developed. Yeah. So we are taking your super chat questions today. Please be generous and you know share with us questions you may have for us in the hour so we can read them on the screen and try to address, you know, question. Yes, someone said hate the whole debt issue. The debt, the debt, the debt issue. What are you when you say the debt issue? What exactly are you referring to as the debt issue? How he's trying to leverage the debt of the state to divide. Glad to see you too. Thank you, big le bad lefty, for acknowledging my presence. So again, folks, we are taking super chats. So please be free to be generous and contribute as we uh, are having people bring in. So what are folks thinking about what's going on in the presidential election, man? What is are anyone is anyone excited about what's going on with either side of the aisle? Biden or uh, I can't imagine too many people are excited about either Biden or Trump. What are thoughts thought on the third party candidates? Is there anything at all that anyone sees as an agenda to as an alternative to what's happening in the U.S.? Any any uh, mm. any ideas? What are your thoughts? I'm too sure. What is it? What, what are you I'm excited sorry. about? I'm excited about those Trump sneakers. Do you like those Trump sneakers? <laughs> no, they're terrible. <laughs> I saw a video sad. with some guy who bought them and he was very excited, young black guy. Um, and then it cut to another video of a guy saying, if you order them now, they'll install the taps on the bottom for you. Oh, wow. So you can tap dance in your chump sneakers. <laughs> Wow, wow, that's kind of that's kind of uh assuming that just because you get your trump stickers, you're getting your tap dance on oh, for real, for real, huh? <laughs> yep. Get your get your sexy flossy on with your trump sneakers. <laughs> they are tacky. A friend of yours is running for city council and he's under house arrest. I think that's going to make his bid kind of difficult there, Dusty. <laughs> Don't take it personally. I'm just trying to say that. I mean, that, that might this sounds. I mean, hey, I mean, if Trump can don't, I mean, not, not, don't look at don't look at all things Trump as a role model for your politics. True. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. As a former tap that tap dancer, I take offense to that implication. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Alaikum salam, brother Melbourne from brother from Melbourne, Australia. How are you, Jalil? Jalal, nowhere, man. Yep. So, on the other hand, I just got my primary ballot from Washington State, and I'm mostly just tempted to check the Dem box and write in Trump. And write in Trump. I literally can't think of anything that makes me more sense than that. Why would you write in Trump? Why yeah, would you, would you do that? Exactly. Do people think that Trump is a foregone conclusion? Trump has always been pre peddling subpar merchandise. Is that really the, nest, the nature sure. of, of Trump's overall per, uh, persona as a human being? Peddler of subpar merchandise? Those steaks he was selling? What about his school, his university, the non the non accredited university? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> is is Nikki Haley basically just campaigning to be Trump's VP? Hmm. Is that what That's a good question. What do we think in the chat? Do we think that Nikki Haley is campaigning to be Trump's Trump chat? Have you seen exterminate all the brutes? Your thoughts? I've not, I've not seen it yet, but want to. Was listening to Naomi Klein's 
doppelganger, and she likes to talk. She likes to talk about it. Yeah, Naomi Klein's doc, doppelganger. You talking about yeah, the, the two Naomi Klein's. <laughs> Jason says he had a fake Monopoly game in the eighties. I let me tell you, I tried to watch Exterminate All the Brutes, and let me tell you one thing about Exterminate All the Brutes. Exterminate All the Brutes came out at the same time when there was this real rise of like, um kind of uh, racial grievance porn that I felt was coming out in the media where everyone was just like pimping out black racial grievance and suffering through racism in the time and history that right after George Floyd that made me very, very suspicious of people using it as a means to really get that kind of patronage from that type of politics. So I was very disinclined to check it out. But mm -hmm. I, do, I, I had heard people who were watching who said that you know they felt that it was good. I don't know. I'm, I am a fan of uh, Raul Peck's work. I thought his book on uh, his piece, piece, his movie on uh, James Baldwin was pretty good. I don't know. Did you watch it? Did no, I didn't. I heard it was good, but I mean that's not really a critique. Someone says their choices are to choose from Democrat, vote for Biden, or Phillips, or choose representative, vote for Trump, or Haley. Why not choose them and write up right in Trump? Oh. Okay. Do you think that people who are angry who will now fall in line behind Biden or Newsom or whoever in November, or will people vote third party or stay home? A deck. That's a very good question. That that. Um, I'll be very honest with you. I think that Biden has a significant threat being posed in in certain states by third party candidates, where he is not going to be able to assure that he will be necessarily guaranteed success, particularly in places like Michigan, where uh, the Muslim population might stay home because of his politics in Gaza. I think that in the Midwest and places where you have large Muslim populations, uh, that might be a case. But um, I'm not necessarily saying that there's going to be a third party candidate that's going to sweep in and take over the super majority of votes, right? I don't say that that's going to happen. But I think that they, they can play key roles in certain states because the map is not the same anymore, right? What did it take Biden to win in 2020? He lost Florida, he had to win Georgia. He had to, you know, he had to uh, um, get Arizona, and those key states, third-party significant outcome, can have a negative effect on his ability to really gain the cut the elective cultural votes needed for him to win. So my position is that I, I don't know if everyone's just going to fall in line. I think that there's going to there are a lot of people who are still who are still turned off because of what happened with the the Gaza incident. Mm -hmm. And this is a frustration in the part, particularly amongst the youth. But this is the thing, though. I think the better question is this. Are the people who were turned off by Biden enough of an important voter block that their lack of participation would affect things anyway? Or are they excuse me? Or are they people who normally just not come out and stay home anyway? In other words, if these young people who are like, we're not voting for Biden because of what happened in Gaza. Are uh, are uh, an, a constituency that are not going to come out anyway? Then it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to make a difference, you know, because we're talking about constituencies that haven't been necessarily those ones who turn out in the first place. Now, yeah, I mean, you know, Biden won by the skin of the skin of his teeth last time, so. At the same time, can he pull it out again? I, I, I think it's a, going to be a close election, and I, I, I'll be very honest with you. I think that the negatives that Biden has because of the recession, because of of uh, of uh, Gaza, are so high that it might cost him in those swing states. But uh, I can't call it. I, I, I tell you right now, in the state of Florida, unfortunately, I think that you know. Trump might win it again. 
because the reactionary right wing right is so drenched, so entrenched in this state, they might have success one more time. That what do you sense. what are your thoughts, uh Tucson? And that makes sense about Florida. That that's a good prediction, I think. Yeah. But I don't think they're mobilizing any new constituencies. No. Nobody's being mobilized, really. It's going to be low turnout, Jason predicts, also. Donald Naylor, I said, Pascal, what alternative exists to the town to 10? If you have an Irish in America, I believe that a small minority did improve the lives of the Irish majority. This is racial population different. That's a very interesting question, Mr. Naylor. Donald Naylor asks, what alternative? Well, I think that the problem that we have with the town to 10 paradigm that we had in the United States, right, is that because the ruling class generally used this particular uh, brokering constituency as a means to kind of buffer between the goals and agenda of the American black population and not really fulfill their needs, it ended up being a kind of tool for them to recycle their own political agenda into the into the actual black masses, as opposed to propose a new politics that change the status quo for the black constituency. So when you have an Irish constituency who has a small minority that is speaking on the behalf of the ruling class, the question becomes, are they really a ventriloquist for the ruling class downward, or are they traditionally moving moving upwards in terms of petitioning the ruling class from the bottom up? My growth, my problem with the Talented Tenth program is that it always was a top-down agenda of the black elites reflecting the agenda of the black of the ruling class from the top and just and translating it downward as opposed to the other way around. Uh, we have some yeah, more. super chat question from Dr. Claw. Dr. Claw, what is your take on the seemingly coordinated move by the GOP dominated U.S. states? Example, Abbott, Abbott Texas, uh, 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 with immigration meant agitate the federal government and its political projects in motion or reckon all coincidence. I think this is all coincidence. This is all not coincidence at all. This is this, this is definitely cool. This is all. This is all this is all being coordinated. Abbott, Texas, as well. What's going on with Florida, particularly with the way in which some of these governors are shipping over their their super, super, superfluous uh, majorities over to states like uh, New Jersey, New York, and things of that nature. So, yeah, no, the coordinated moves. The, this is why it's a win-win for the GOP because it forces the the, the Democratic liberal states to deal with internal contradictions that they have within their policies, such as having, um, you know, being uh, open to immigration and it neglects, it allows people to neglect in the minds of the, the, the GOP populations that it was these right-wing states to fail, that failed to, to, to actual man, actually manage these agendas in the first place. So in other words, it actually allows the right-wing states to defer the harm over to the to the liberal states who are forced to, with, to have the bodies in the, in them in the end. All right. We have another super chat question here. Thoughts on the evil arcade like from the mass in Bolivia? All right. I'm actually not fully aware of that. I'd love to hear people who can give us some education on what's going on in the evil Akali beef in the MS in Bolivia right now. Maybe we'll have Camilo on to talk about it. Yes, we could. This is a revolution pocket. Do we have any other super chats? I'm not seeing super chats. I did see this. Smash the like. That's important. S someone said, as an Irish American, I find the Irish Americans quite disappointing. 
has become such a downhill since they became white in the U.S. Well, America is a very reactionary country, man. Don't don't necessarily blame the Irish or the Italians. Blame this, the way the superstructure of America allows people who get the, the accoutrement of working class to middle class status have politics that identify with a reactionary kind of patriotic, you know, USA, USA, worldview of the, of the globe. True. Seems like the chat is trying to hook up Jason and Frenchie. Frenchie, who's Frenchie? Do you remember Frenchie? She was on a Valentine's Valentine's Day show. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean. I don't know if we want to be working. Are we trying to work in Jason's action off the show? He's not even here to represent his interests. You talk about <laughs> the invisible man and the relevancy. Oh, wow. That's an interesting question. We have some interesting black politics questions, which, by the way, makes me feel right at home since I'm a black politics guy. Do, you, do I have any talk interesting? Can you talk about the, the invisible man and its relevancy at this moment? The invisible man, uh, uh, one of my favorite novels, probably my favorite novel about 20th century race politics, Ralph Ellison. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a book about the, the African-American who was traveling through various parts of the United States through a period of time in the earlier 20th century during Jim Crow and discusses the invisibility that he feels uh, even within segments inside the African-American community. One of the things that I found fascinating about the book is that he talks about various political phenomenon that are existing inside black politics. He talks about Booker T, Booker, Booker T, Booker Tism coming out of the South in Alabama. He talks about the politics of, of, uh, of, uh, of black nationalism coming out of New York, New York while he's in Harlem during the Harlem Renaissance. But what is, what is fascinating is that during all of these periods of time, he still discusses that he ultimately feels invisible, that he feels uh, unrepresented by what he's saying. So if you're asking, do I believe that the thesis of the Booker T. Washington, of the, excuse me, of the, of the Invisible Man, that a book that was written pretty much in the, you know, mid early 20th century is that blackness still renders black people invisible i would ask well which black people are you particularly talking to i think that class renders poor black poor people regardless of their color invisible and i think that poor and working class black people do disproportionately have trajectories of poverty that affect them in different ways because of the ways in which race may interact with class and color. But to say that all black people in America are invisible, I don't necessarily think that we can say that that's the case, particularly the way in which American capital uses to project certain images of blackness as, a, as, the, as the talisman of success to neutralize the critique of American capitalism. You know, so, but thank you for that question. Uh, about uh, the Invisible Man. I've heard you talk about the Clinton Foundation in Haiti. I'm unclear about the details, your thoughts. The Clinton Foundation in Haiti was used as a means to cipher off global donations under the guise of preparing Clint ha Haiti for a post-earthquake reality, when in reality it worked to siphon f international wealth and resources to the management of that fund who were the Clintons to their benefit and to the detriment of the Haitian people without fully completing any of the actual actual jobs and the actual uh, demands that were put forth about put forth for it. Large segments of the housing were not completed. Uh, many of the infrastructure jobs were not done under the demand 
It's the Clintons have mismanaged the resources from the Clinton and the Clinton relief in Haiti uh, of profoundly. I can find some articles if you wish and actually post them at some point towards the end of the show. And um, believe me, I'm being more than generous. I wish we had known this question would have come up. I would have done the research to address them because I've written, if you read my piece I wrote, uh, Haiti for Sale in Huffington Post, I talk about the role of the Clintons in Haiti. The last piece I wrote for Black Agenda Report talks about the roles of, of, uh, of the Clintons in Haiti as well. Oh, someone asked another question. Super chat. How will multipolarity affect black people in the coming, de coming decades? That's a very good question. That's a very, very difficult question. Uh, I think that a lot of people are assuming that multipolarity is going to create some type of uh, dawn of justice in the world for black and brown people where, uh, where China and uh, the pivot to the West with China and Russia are going to create an alternative to the traditional bad old days of dealing with the IMF and the World Bank, NATO, and the Western allies. And my position is that that's a possibility, but at the same time, if you don't have the internal infrastructure to, to protect yourself from being pillaged from the West, what exactly protects us from being pillaged from the from the east i think that without internally showing up the strengthening of the governance that exists in the global south that the notion that the uh multiculturalism in and of its multipolarity excuse me multipolarity in and of itself is going to be a, sol a solving of the problem of black and brown people is 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 naive, and the question becomes: Which black and brown people? Are black and brown people still trapped in what is what is the capitalist realities in the United States? Black and brown people in North America, black and brown people in Europe, they're going to have a different reality interacting with multipolarity than black and brown people in the global South. And the question becomes: You know how that you know how those things are going to be negotiated are going to be based on the terms in which the global south is able to leverage from those actors in the east i don't think i don't necessarily think it's it's uh i mean i think it owes potential it could be positive but i don't think it's a guaranteed one shot it's going to it's going to be the salvation for everything Someone asked me in terms of Haitian and African thought, do you know the work of Professor Patrick Belgrade Smith? Yes, I'm familiar with Professor, Professor Patrick Belgrade Smith. He comes from a very well respected Haitian elite family, and I understand with his analysis. Uh, uh, I'm familiar with his work. We have a super chat from Spike Moline. Sure. No question. Just a super chat. So we thank you for that. Any more questions, guys? We have a question from. So, when will African Americans be considered white? When will they vote like for Republicans in high numbers? When they have a powerful, talented tenth, or can they play both parties, or never? Uh that's a very. I don't think African Americans will be considered white. I think that the the, the notion of being considered white is uh, something that comes out of quote unquote whiteness studies. I think the problem that African Americans have is that they are disproportionately poorer than larger than other elements of the of of, of the population. Ty, someone said Tahir has a good question. Jason said Tahir has a where is Tahir? Where is Tahir's question? Do we see his question? I don't see it. I do see Spike did have a question, and this is it. Oh, so much. So asked me, how do I reconcile being a, a Muslim and being a communist, given the aversion, the hostility towards religion among leftists? I am a socialist. I am not a communist, but that's a, you know, that's, that's really more of a description than anything else. That's a very that's a very good question. That's a very and no one's asked me that question on the show before. Uh, uh, first of all, I when I look at what drive my leftism as a Muslim, I think that the best of the left is part of Islam. 
caring for the poor, caring for the needy. Social welfare state is part of what is called the WAKF, which is the economic paradigm of an Islamic state. I think that the best the best paradigms that we see in terms of nation state models or social governance are the models that we see from the prophets, whether they be uh, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Jesus, uh, even Moses, and all of them. And I think that the, the idea that the left is has to be alien from uh, those models that talk about care for care for the the best of you, the, the poor, and those left of humanity, simply because of ideological notions, indoctrination, or doctrine. I think is poor strategy on the left, and I don't think that we should neglect people because they are religious, simply because they are interested in our ideas. You know, so uh, that's... We do have a question. We do have a question on the screen. Question was, do you think that there is a need and a beneficial gain from discussions on the works of Hubert Harrison, Theodore Allen, and Jerry? Yes, oh, that's a very good question. I think we've just, we've had uh, we've had a whole show on Hubert Harrison. Theodore Allen as well. I think we didn't have a show on Theodore Allen. We had Jeff Perry. We had Jeff Perry on our show. God, you know, rest in peace before he passed away. And he, we, we did a show. We had a show on on Hubert Harrison, and it was a very good show. I was introduced to Hubert Harrison by Jeff Perry, and we like to introduce many people to old black leftists from the early 20th century who they may not be familiar with as a means of trying to reintroduce black people to their left traditions. This is another part of their question. And do you think that along with works like people like Adolf and Tory Reid, Catherine Lou, Senator Nutson, Walter Ben Michaels, to name a few, could be used to create a dialogue? We have tried to use those kind of works. We've, I think we've tried to use those works, coalition moving towards a new, stronger way. And now we form solidarity to handle race and the unified humanity. Okay, that's a better question. So in other words, you're asking, can we find a way to create a a solidarity, a unitary kind of solidarity with the kind of re-tradition of leftists to challenge the way we look at race? I think that's a valid question to ask. I think that we should try to incorporate them into the challenge. Uh, and, uh, and I think that uh, and I think that that would be a better way to do it. So I think that's something that's worth asking. That's something we have because I'm a black man in Chicago and I have a family members across this class spectrum that believe more in Tariq Nasheed's economic message than Marx. How do I refute that? That's a very good. That's a very good. That's a very good question. Listen, it's very very logical to have a lot of black people who are working class who see their politics through a nationalist prism who are not interested in talking about class politics or Marxism or classism because all they see is you know white is on their back and that's all they care about. That's all they think. They deal with racism and they deal with racism in a way where they, you know, and they, they are not particularly interested uh, in challenging challenging uh those 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 class intricacies within black politics i think that what you have to do is you have to find ways of explaining to them how to the traditional racial unified racial structured politics that we that they're challenged they're talking about creates the class paradigm where you have 70 percent of black wealth still being in the hands of the top 10 percent of black 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 uh, wealth holders, and that this notion that always being in it one together all in all has created a brokerage system where you have black elites negotiate the position of black people to the ruling class, oftentimes to the detriment to the black masses, that doesn't allow them to challenge those things at their behest. So, I mean, I think that the ways in which you have to address black people who are unwilling to talk about class amongst themselves who want to deal with a reparations first kind of paradigm is ask the questions, well, when we get these reparations, who exactly is going to be in charge of negotiating those reparations to be given out to the majority of the community? And how exactly are we going to be able to trust them to know that they're going to do so at the best, at the best, at the majority of the community in the first place? 
they have no fiduciary responsibility to us. We have no, they have no legal responsibility to us at all. Donald Naylor with this question. I don't think that, again, my question to Donald Naylor is that I don't necessarily think that all necessarily, that all blacks are going to be considered white or that they will vote Republican in high numbers. So, so I think that one of the reasons that keeps black people voting for the Democratic Party in the numbers that it does is the perception that the Democratic Party is is uh is the is uh the broke the is the the anti-racist party do is the party that will bury their protector from the 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 racist harm doled out by the republican party and i think that when we look at the parties the democratic party has been nailing out in the age of neoliberalism quite frankly that's quite the opposite you know part of the problem i have is with this stale notion that like you know you know, allowing yourself to identify yourself as white is what gives you the opportunity to identify with the Republican Party in this country. Because there are lots of black people who who have Republican politics, whether they vote Democrat or Republican, anyway. They're not the majority. You know, the, the Democratic Party has been increasingly neo, neoliberal. From the from the from the period of all the, the Obamas onward, the Clintons. From the, exactly from the Clintons onward. Got any other questions for us, Chat? The black men is increasingly becoming Republican in recent years. I think. I mean, I don't. I think black people are, are are increasingly disappointed with the Democratic Party, and they're considering their options. All all the Republicans need is to peel off a few. Exactly. It's working. It's not like they're getting a lot. Of, Man, it's funny. You know, once I started to get into the mode of the whole child was feeling good, man. I got a little burst, a little allergy action, just trying to just tickle my my nose. And I was like, Yo, "What's going on here, man? I rebuke you." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, "Oh, what's going on here with this?" What do I think about the Sahel? Is anything better? That's a very good question. That's but comes over the question: Sahel, what's going on in Africa and the Sahel? I, I'm optimistic about what's going on in the Francophone Sahel in French West Africa. I think their attempt to try to gain independence from the French Francophone CFA Africa economic system, French economic system is logical and it's something to look forward to. I'm also seeing a lot of working class lower blacks people in Chicago going in super hard on immigrants. I'm getting it. But where are the Dems taking care of both parties? I've been seeing that phenomenon in Chicago, man. It's not pretty out there. It's not pretty in Chicago. But Chicago, let me tell you, Chicago has some hardcore nationalist politics. And the class politics in Chicago are rough. And it's not a place that's going to be very easily open to progressive politics. But that mayor there, the mayor, the new mayor in Chicago had an opportunity to start on a new footing. But, you know, the traditional classes, not a game. Dizzle McFizzle, Pascal, MT, what is the opinion of the holes and their level? <laughs> I don't think I can ask that question. <laughs> Here, what is your opinion of the hoes and their level of loyalty across the whole diaspora? Love the show. Are the hoes loyal, Pascal? I think that we should refute refute the notion that we should use such pejorative to refute to refute to uh to to uh to uh call ladies of the left. <laughs> Are they loyal? <laughs> I don't think they should. Do you think they should be if we use things like terms like hoes to refer to them? I mean, it's also an assumption. Maybe the hoes are male on the left. 
Oh, word? Is that is that we is that is that uh maybe is, maybe is, I thought so holes is a term that can, can be okay that is not gender specific now? Could be. Is that your creation? Are you are you created that to some or <laughs> the whole diaspora has a right to a homeland? <laughs> Do we have any other super chat? Here we are. Always a gentleman. We're trying. We're trying. We're trying. Respect women. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's try to change. Let's go back to the questions. <laughs> let's try to get super chat has been sl slightly uh, dislocated with yeah. Slightly, yeah, M2 Sun suggesting a question that derailed a bit of the super chat. Let's get back to more t uh, tangible questions. Bow to the queen. Oh, well, hold on now. Who's he? Okay. <laughs> Andy Williams says, I'm a Fartskyite. Oh my God, really? Yep. <laughs> Here's a question, Christi Christina. Are you are you hopeful the Cornell was question message improves embracing profess prophetic voices of diverse religious and secular tr uh traditions and bringing them into public discourse? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Uh I am some. I'm I'm some two questions at the same time. I am I am hopeful of Cornell West message embracing prophetic voices, and I think that it's important for us to do so at this time. Secular tradition, and I think that the left should do so. To answer your question, Christina, do you think he's positioned to pick up a lot of votes from disaffected voters? I think that because of personal baggage he has, it's going to be kind of hard. Yeah. Is a question. Yes, yeah, so that's a really good question. Yes. I found the IGC response to be genocide to kind of weak. Do you have any thoughts on the on a, on, on a lawyer and a political radical analyst? I mean, I watched the uh, the IGC the IGC question on genocide. And I, first of all, shout out to South Africa for deciding to bring up genocide as a charge against uh, uh, Israel at this particular time. I felt that it was it from what I understand, and I watched the analysis. It was a difficult terrain for the IGC to be able to bring up genocide in the consequence of the actual Israeli uh, actions at the time. I find the, the responses backwards to be somewhat questionable as well. I am not a specialist in this area of law. And it's from what I understand, I am also hearing that it's difficult for the IGC to take action at this time. So I am, I am still trying to really rectify what their position is with what action can be taken in the alternative. Finkel says the ICJ can't really do anything. Yes, they don't have authority to really make to compel action. What are the prospects for Palestine that actually has Palestinians versus what are prospects for the continuation of the Israeli state, as you know, on long term, that's a very, that's, that depends on what kind of what kind of efforts we have at a unified Palestinian one state solution. They can't order a unilateral ceasefire, and Hamas isn't a, a party. The ICJ is a fantastic tool for political pressure and raising for people's consciousness. Hmm. So I ask, could you foresee unions as a key of economic sectors like us, like the ports, railroads, or use their leverage over Congress? That's what the way unions have worked in the past, and I think that they should definitely work that way and again. Sure. Uh, 
But if the Palestinians are basically expelled, which means seems possibly likely, how can Israel be dislodged? At the same time, how can Israel really continue as it is? Listen, the difficulties and the intricacies of what's going on in Palestine are sometimes beyond the, 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 the comprehension of the modern mind to be able to really fathom. But all I know is that we've got to find a way to a one-state solution that allows us to represent, to, to respect the integrity of, and the, the rights of the Palestinian people and the rights of uh, Jews to practice, to live there as well. And I don't think that's impossible. These people live together as one for hundreds of years. They can do it again. Work at I'm a fan of working co-ops. Revolutionary potential. I think it has revolutionary potential. I think anytime you change the economic paradigm in the status quo space to try to represent co-op ownership of the means of production by the masses, it definitely has revolutionary potential. Unions are small, but we saw that they had they had some they had some high. Uh, it's a high, some high points. Use this one there. How do we get the votes for the focus, their energies every two or four years on building those, not just voting for whomever? The, 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 the listen, unions have, to, you gotta have internal pressure on union leadership to make sure that they show. They show loyalty to the issues of the uh, of the body politic, or else, unfortunately, they will co they will coalesce to the Democratic Party all the time. Keep the pressure on. Dusty yeah. is in Israel, I believe. Spent, I spent most of my life here since I was a small child, and I have no idea where it's going to end. He says it seems like Algeria in the 50s. What do you think of that comparison? Oh, I, I mean, Algeria was a bloodbath for the Algerians in the front. In the end, it did end up with Algerian nationalism that was kind of weak, that, 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 that wasn't exactly a beautiful thing. I mean, I don't want to see a Palestinian state that's just simply subservient to the overall machinations of global imperialism and Israel as a larger larger power prerogative. I'd like to see the states exist with some kind of parity as one state solution. Is has anyone seen this new documentary that uh, Giannis Varoufakis is doing? I forgot the name of it. Have you seen it? Hmm. No, I heard something about it, though. Like he did an interview about it I came across. I didn't watch it, though. I do remember Andrew's on Dr. Cat. Yes. Andy William. Aren't you friends? I do know her, yes. Is there anything minus a real immigration policy that makes immigration to keep capitalists from building up a reserve army of labor and driving down worker gains? Interesting question. Is there anything minus a real immigration policy that makes limiting immigration to keep capitalism from building up a reserve army of labor to driving down worker gains? What exactly is the question in the, in, in that in that phrasing? Hmm. In other words, is there anything besides limiting immigration that keeps capitalism from building a reserve army of if driving down working gains? Well, why do we have had so why we had have we had so many administrations interested in or, or spew interest in limiting integration? What are your thoughts on defense children's and international Palestinian versus Biden? With the federal judge states with the administration likely complicit in genocide. I heard of that. 
That was a local. That was a local case, right? That was a local case, I believe. I think in any situation yeah. that tries to put pressure on the Biden administration for its participation with the Israeli in genocide is a good thing. This person sent their question twice. If you have another question, you can send it. I'll be able to look out for it. It was federal. It was federal, right. I, I think the capacity of, this, of a nation state on a federal level in the United States to actually bring that charge against Biden is limited because of certain federalism requirements, but I still think it's a good idea. I still support it. It's also on Woke Imperium. I remember the interview saying how, well, yes, that's it. Left Taiwan is because the interview saw so many LGBT flags. Left culture will be used as an argument for inter intervention in the future. Is that? Uh, That's interesting how someone is saying that a left culture will be the use for the for intervention. In Taiwan? Hmm. I trust Pascal's opinions because he is the learned one. I think that's a, he's repeating. He's spoofing off normal figures. Well, normal that's, figures. that's right. <laughs> We're coming to the end of the hour, you guys. If you have any questions, ask them now. If Saudi became woke and social issues, the libs would die for MBS. <laughs> <laughs> How do you see millennial slash Gen Z home ownership in the future? Mostly renters are getting homes passed down from their parents. I think that depends on the political economy of the actual real estate business in terms of interest rates, in terms of loan for loan, loan the debt student loan debt going into the market. But I can tell you with the way in which the real estate market is so inflated right now, I'm not particularly optimistic for the future for housing for millennials and Gen Z at all. High rate of inflation. Explain commodity fetishism to me like I'm five. Why do you assume that I'm an, I am an expert at the term commodity fetishism? Right. Maybe that's a Professor Wolf thing. I like this comment. Yeah, the chick should always be. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Shirley. How are you? Shirley's back. She got the bat signal and she, she came back. Good to see you, Shirley. One from Cambria Heights. Your question: Can you explain why you are critical of, for instance, are you critical towards Senator Robinson? That's a great question. In terms of black or towards contemporary usage, yeah, from Cambria Heights. Shout out, to Dave on B. My 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 problem with the concept of racial capitalism is that I don't find it clarifying in terms of how specific racial how capitalism necessarily racializes black people in a way that distinguishes them from the overall utility of capitalism. And I think that the notion in and of itself is actually not a pro-Marxist concept, but it actually a quasi, or not even a quasi, but anti-Marxist concept in that it's trying to, it's trying to find a way of stating that Marx is defective in, in his analysis of the futility of race in capitalism. When I think that Marx along with the eventual analysis of Marxist Leninism, does a very good job of explaining where race and capitalism intercede. I don't believe it's a Marxist book. I think it's the opposite. 
Interesting. Oops. You don't have to read that. That was an accident. Thank you. Let's keep, let's keep that always. Mr. Lamar Films. Oh, here's one. Thoughts on RFK. He's, he's yapping for Israel cash. You have a political phony. Yeah, what do people make of RFK being so caping for Israel? What is that about? I don't know. I don't consider him a real contender for anything, though. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, you guys keep it out. And then, uh, yo, you guys kept the questions coming for an hour. That was not a game. You guys keep mm -hmm. your brother on his toes. I'm just saying, how are you feeling? I'm feeling all right. Feeling good. Feeling strong. I'm fully awake now. Yeah, MT got sunny days and no hood noises outside. Yeah, it's pretty quiet outside. I think it gets noisy at night. Somebody is saying happy birthday to you, Pascal. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Bladed. Thank you, Bladed. My birthday was in December. Oh. I think this is a question for you. Podcast is something like I find la la land and controls politics positions on the resistance egregious. Do you agree the condemnations and misunderstanding of the resistance are shorthanded? Are you talking about the resistance in Palestine? Hmm. I'm not familiar with Katrina's position on the Palestine issue. Right. Oh, Lane or Doug Lane. The duck is fine, actually. I would never mark the duck. Oh, here's one. Yes, I have seen the movie Jesus and the Black Messiah. I, I did I wasn't a big fan of the movie. I wasn't a big fan. We've come up on the hour. I mean, we we have come up on the hour. Last call for questions. Last call for super chats. Otherwise, we're gonna wrap up. Oh, people are throwing out serious questions now. Any thoughts on focusing on political efforts on building alternative infrastructures, cooperative solidarity, self-governance, eco-socialist alt zones over organizing? That's an interesting question. That's a, that's that's a, that's a suggestion worth considering. Will Derek Vaughn return? Vaughn is a friend of the show. Yeah, Vaughn is part of the show. Scott Ritter. Would you guys you know who him? that is? Scott Ritter, isn't he a bit of a conspiracy theorist? Hmm. Oh, here's a question just for you. 
on the screen what now. You, what are your thoughts about the way why the state of Florida is such a right wing hell? I think it's because of the large way in which the, the factors of the large anti anti Cuban uh, anti Castro left merges with the the reactionary traditional Republican Party to create a much more right wing echo chamber than really actually exists. These people are not traditional conservatives. They're conservatives because of policy that they're chasing since they got here in the United States. My thoughts on Christian on uh, C.L. James' books, The Black Jacobins, is that I think his his assessment of Dessalines is incorrect, and that his here his heroic worship of of uh, Louverture is misplaced, considering that Louverture was basically trying to remake a black version of a the of a uh, of a feudal system uh, as an economic model. Uh, lots of good dishes. Lumbi, Cleo, for some who like pork. Uh, tasso. They have many, many good Haitian dishes. The easy ones would be you like plantains. And those are tasty. Who's this? Why do you deny the rac that racialized as black people in America who are a mass or the citizens of Africans enslaved in the US are direct distinct political economy? Because there's class characteristics that exist within those that do those, those those functionalities that have been in conflict with each other. There are there are over 42 million black people in America. Do you think that they work in some kind of unitary solidar solidaristic body or are they actually controlled? By our external first that, that renders their politics as such. Where exactly is the conference where black people come together and choose their politics to render it as a unitary force? When does that happen? Who chooses the black leader that's the black spokesman for black America? When does that ever happen? All right. If there's no more super chats, we are at the hour and we're going to wrap it up. I'd like to thank you guys for the opportunity to be taking your calls and your questions. And uh, hopefully we can do this again. Yeah, man. It's been fun. All right. Let's hit the outro. We are, are. out.